Uh, hello everyone, my name is Xin Wei Fu. Um, our work is Edgewise, a better stream processing engine for the edge. This work is from Virginia Tech. Um, Internet of Things applications are growing rapidly. Generally speaking, Internet of Things systems contain things, gateways, and the cloud. Things could be either sensors and actuators. For example, as a smart city, the sensor could be either um, temperature sensors and the actuators could be springers. And it is similar for a smart hospital here. And uh, at this moment, uh, IoT systems rely on, rely on the cloud to get data from the sensor, processing the data, and trigger the actuators. However, um, the edge itself, the gateways themselves, they are powerful enough to have local data stream processing there. And stream processing is well suited for the IoT edge since um, sensors may generate a continuous of data streams that often must be processed in a timely fashion. And let me introduce our edge model here. There exists different edge model. Um, this is the edge model we used in our paper. So we view the edge as a collection of distributed uh, gateways. For the hardware, we assume the, um, the gateway has limited resources compared with the cloud service, but it can afford reasonable complex operations. So for example, we use Raspberry Pis as the gateway in our paper. And second, um, the gateways should be well connected. Um, for the application, the application should be reasonable complex. For example, the farm bits from Microsoft, um, it uses the gateway to uh, collect data from the sensors and and have a summary before sending it to the cloud. And also, it uses gateways to process um, time-sensitive local data, data processing at the edge. And we list four unique um, edge stream processing requirements here. First, multiplex, since we have limited resources at the edge. Second, low latency, since um, edge has the advantage of the locality and no bad pressure because it triggers latency and uh, storage issue. We will revisit this later in the slides. And scalable, of course, um, we can think of um, if we have millions of sensors in a smart city. And stream processing um, use a data flow program model, and here is an example. It's actually uh, the data flows from, uh, through the topology from sources to things, and a topology actually a DAG, and they have three kinds of nodes. One is the source. Source could be a sensor. The sync could be either an accurator or a message queue to the cloud. And an operation could perform arbitrary uh, computation defined by the programmer. And the uh, edge in the topology is just the data flow. And after defining the, the topology here, the programmer needs to describe the number of instances for each operation when they want to do the deployment. And this makes it friendly to the scalability. And let's introduce the runtime system here. Um, uh, we have a list of modern stream processing engines for the cloud. Uh, here we have Apache Storm, Apache Flink, and Apache Harem. Um, under the hood, they all use the one worker per operation architecture. Um, basically, they assign a worker and a queue to each operation. And the queues are connected in a pipeline manner. And each thread gets the data from its own queue and process the data and put the result to the destination queue. So it has a back pressure mechanism. So what is the back pressure mechanism? It monitors the queue length for each queue. If either the queue length uh, is higher than a high water mark, um, it will stop getting data from the sink. And then until uh, all of the queue lengths are under a lower to mark, then it start pulling data again. So back pressure kills latency because it stops uh, getting data from the source. And it's not friendly for storage because some, um, the storage may, um, you need the storage to store the pending data, which may be unavailable at the edge setting. And here's the problem. So problem is that existing one worker per operation architecture stream processing engines are not suitable for the edge setting. 
um, it could it could then uh, meet the requirement of multiplex. Those stream processing engines they are um, they are built for cloud, so they assume cloud class resources, and they rely on the operating system scheduler. Um, however. In the edge, we have limited resources here. So it means we may have a number of workers or operations larger or much larger than the number of CPU cores. This leads to inefficiency in the uh, operating system scheduler, and which makes multiplex challenging. And if we have the low input rate, such that most of the queues are empty, then that doesn't matter. But once the system gets saturated, we have higher input rate such that most or all queues contain data. This will lead to scheduling inefficiency because operating system scheduling has no knowledge about the engine level. He doesn't know whether this queue is full or whether this queue is empty. So it will make unwise um, decisions to trick unnecessary back pressure, killing the latency. So I, have, I will have an example here. So suppose we have two operations, two queues. Q1 is the successor of the Q0, and we only have a single core. Since it's a random OS scheduler, so it may random schedule one. For example, it may schedule this, red, uh, this, this green one first, green data first, and then get the descheduler to continue to uh, schedule the black one, and get back to the operation zero. After finishing this red one, the result of the red data will put into the tail of the Q1 and get back to the black one. And at this moment, maybe a red tubal gets into the Q0 and get, and, and at this moment, because the random scheduler is just random, they may just schedule the red one here and finishing it and try to put the result of the red data into the Q1. However, the Q1 now, um, is full, so trigger unnecessary back pressure. This kind of back pressure could be avoided, actually. The key things I want to show here is that um, operating system scheduler doesn't have any en engine level um, knowledge, so will lead, lead to the scheduling inefficiency. So here we propose edgewise. So um, this is the runtime before, and this is the edgewise. So we have two key ideas. The first one is that because the number of workers may be larger than the number of CPU cores, then what about we have a fixed size worker pool there? Second, so we have inefficiency in the operating system scheduler, then why not to have an engine level scheduler to make wiser choices here? Putting them together, if we look at the figure here, we have four operations here, but if we only have two cores, then we will only have two threads in the thread pool. And it is the job of the of the scheduler to schedule, uh, to determine uh, which operation should be scheduled at which moment. So um, for the fixed size thread pool, we set the number of worker equals to the number of cores. This help edgewise to support an arbitrary topology on limited resources and reduce the overhead of contending cores. This helps the edgewise to achieve the requirement of multiplex and for the engine level scheduler, there's an interesting story here. Actually, we have a lost lesson here. Um, the data, data, um, database community already studied the operation scheduling like more than 10 years ago. They proposed providing guided priority-based algorithm in the semantic that multiple operations runs within a single worker. For example, the Kani pro, um, from the VLDB 2003 proposed a mean latency algorithm um, to achieve lowest end-to-end uh, -end latency for this topology, which favors the later operations in the topology. And uh, Dr. Backup from VLDB 2000, um, 2004 proposed a mean memory algorithm um, to achieve the lowest uh, um, memory, peak mem memory consumption, which favors the faster filters operations in the, in the topology. However, those findings are not applied to the stream processing when we design the modern stream processing engine. So we argue that we should regain the benefit of the engine level operation scheduling when we design the engine uh, in the edge setting. Um, we also proposed a conjunction of well scheduler as the, uh, used by the edgewise. It is a profiling-free dynamic solution. Um, the key idea is to 
try to balance the queue sizes to, un to avoid unnecessary back pressure. And every time it makes a decision, it chooses the operation with the most pending data to schedule first. So that's the example we used before. So at this moment, uh, Q1 has two data inside. So um, it will get scheduled first and continue. And at this moment, the red one comes in. Now the Q0 has more data than the, than the Q1. Then it will schedule Q0 and put the result into the, into the Q1. So by balancing the Q size, we can alleviate the back pressure problem and achieve lower latency when the system is saturated. So we also did a performance analysis using QN theory um, for our scheduler. So to the best of our knowledge, we are the first to apply the QN theory to analyze the improved performance in the context of stream processing. Uh, we have several conclusions here, but I don't have time to list the math here. If you are interested in this one, please read our paper for more details. And evaluation. We implement HYs on top of Apache Storm. We use the Raspberry Pi V3 as our gateway hardware. We use a Apache Storm as our one worker per operation architecture baseline. We also evaluate other schedulers like random and mean memory, mean latency we mentioned before. And for the experiment setup, we focus on the single Pi optimization. Um, anyway, we. We also have a distributed setting in our, in our paper. And we set the pool size to four because we have four core for the Raspberry Pi. And we use the RIoT benchmark as our benchmark. This is a re real time uh, IoT stream processing benchmark for Storm. And, and it, it is co um, reasonable complex. It can uh, consist of four um, topologies. This is one of them. Uh, if you look at the figure, it can contain the decision tree, linear regression, and av window average error estimation. Um, this is a complex, um, reasonable complex, and, that, and also this is the only one I found for the benchmark, reasonable complex, and I think our community should have more benchmarks like this. And we use the metrics of uh, throughput and latency. We have more experiments like a distributed setting, sensitive analysis, throughput, throughput breakdown in our paper, but we only show some of uh, in this talk. So here's the first one I want to show. So this is a throughput latency performance. So what we did is we keep increasing the input rate to the topology to achieve higher and higher throughput. And we measure the end-to-end -end latency of the topology. So as we can see, um, when the input rate and throughput is low here, um, every, everyone did a good job because most of the queues are, 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 are empty. But once the system gets saturated, and that's, that's the place where the, the, um, the, the scheduler makes a difference. If we look at, if we use the latency of 100 as a constraint, the storm can only achieve like 2,600 of throughput. However, the edge wise can achieve uh, 4,400 throughput. And we further break down the latency analysis. So what we did, we chose three different levels of throughput, 400, 1,600, and 2,800. And we measured per operation latency. And we further break down the per operation latency into the queuing waiting time, scheduling time, and the computing time. So. At the first glance, we can know that the majority of the per operation, per operation latency is the queuing waiting time. That's why the scheduling matters. And second, um, um, the O1, the O1 is the heaviest operation in this topology. So what the uh, HYZ did is to reduce a lot queuing waiting time from the heaviest operation and they slightly increase others lighter operations latency like the Q, uh, O2, 3, 4, and 5. So this is not a zero sum game. So what we did is we, we decreased the heaviest one's latency and we slightly increased the, increased the uh, lighter one latency. Um, that's why the edge wise can achieve lower latency when the system is saturated. And this supports our conclusion in our queuing theory analysis. And to conclude, so we study existing stream processing engines 
and discuss their limitations in the edge, we propose edgewise, which use a fixed size of thread pool and conjunction of well scheduler. We found a loss lesson of operation scheduling. We did a performance analysis of conjunction of well scheduler using queuing theory. We achieved up to three times improvement in throughput while keeping latency low. Um, the last thing I want to share with you what I learned from this project is that sometimes the answers in system design lie not in the future, but in the past. Thank you. Stan Shinbei. <laughs> Any questions? And uh, if you would please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Thomas Hi. from Tuvin. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for that last lesson learned. I like that very much. So how do your operators communicate with each other? Do you have like a peer-to-peer -peer communication between the operators or do you use like a message broker or something to? Um, so we focus on the intranode node optimization first. So all the queues are running in the JVM implemented by the Apache Storm. So we are using the in-memory um, transfer here. But um, if, we, if we look at the, one moment please. The, the distributed setting here, if we have in internode communication, they use message queues. Okay, and so have you considered that what happens when nodes move around? So mobility aspects, so typically in these edge scenarios, things will, resources will actually be mobile and move around and not be well connected. Have you considered that case? Uh, we didn't consider, in our model, we only consider well connected gateways here. Okay, because are you interested in that kind of work? Are you, go are you interested in that? Are you going to continue working on that? So uh, mobility? The, the current motivation is from, we have our smart building in the virtual attack. So our model is based on that, okay. but we consider that to work in the future. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Any other questions? So, so then I have a question. So when you looked at the scheduling, were you considering the fact that in the edge world, you're mm -hmm. going to have lots of heterogeneous kinds of devices, and some of these devices, you may schedule something on it, and then it may fail or it may leave the, leave the network. Uh, can you say it again? So a device on which you schedule may fail or mm -hmm. it may leave the network. Have you considered either of those um, conditions? In this model, no. Uh, do you consider heterogeneity of the devices? They are not all the same? Um, for now, no. Uh, we only focus on the intranode, inch not, not, not the multiple node um, optimization yet. Okay. okay. Let's thank Shinbei again. <laughs>